Well, greetings and welcome again to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. My name is Pete Connor, and I'm your show's host on this Wednesday, April 19th of 2017. Well, we've got some fun stuff today. We're going to have music, and we're also going to have some real, um, I think, important information about uh, uh, this week, which happens to be Severe Weather Awareness Week. And uh, we will have, uh, as, as far as that goes, we will have Dave Purcell with us on location. And, and then we'll come back and we will be talking with Gwen Peckery and Kate Harthan, uh, who are board members of the Owatonna Symphony uh, Orchestra, and they brought their instruments. So I'm looking forward to having uh, them do a little something from, uh, from maybe one of their pieces. At any rate, uh, as always, we appreciate any information that you would send to us about people that you'd like to see featured on Owatonna today. Or if you have an event that you would like to see publicized, uh, please do let us know, uh, either by shooting an email to us at oatanatoday at charter.net or by calling the show's producer, Leanne Alt, at 507-390-5751. And now we're going to take a quick break for some messages from our sponsors, and then we'll be back with our first guest. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Oatana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day, taking pride in our community, listening to what you say, a voice you can talk to. We're growing with you. Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Come out to Spare Time Entertainment on Saturday, April 22nd for Bowl for Kids Sake to benefit Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Southern Minnesota. Start today by forming a team, collecting pledges, and bowling for kids in your community. Call 451-5922 for more information or go directly to our website to set up your own fundraising page. Help change the lives of local children. Raise some money and join us for a great time on Saturday, April 22nd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. for Bowl for Kids Sake. See you there. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. We are here with Dave Purcell from Steel County Skywarn, and this is Severe Weather Awareness Week. Hi, Dave. Welcome <laughs> to the Owatonna Today Show again. We just had you on last month talking about the training that you had for Steel County Skywarn. It is fun to be back on again. Yes. And but this is a very important week for all of us here, not only in Steel County, but in the state of Minnesota. Why do we have Severe Weather Awareness Week? I say that slowly because mm -hmm. then I'll just get tongue-tied. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have it slowly anyways because, frankly, it's important. Um, uh, Severe Weather Awareness Week, um, we get very complacent over the course of the winter thinking about our winter storms mm -hmm. instead of severe weather, and we're not ready for it in the spring. Um, and, but this is the time of the year, the beginning of the time of the year, when we start to see severe weather pop up. Um, it typically lasts, um, March is an early time, but we had March tornadoes this year. We did. And, um, but we'll have um, severe weather from typically April, late March, April, um, throughout the course of the spring into the summer and all the way back into August. Uh, it'll start to taper off after the fair. Uh, but that gives you kind of an idea of how the season that we normally experience uh, our severe weather here in southern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And do you think that that season has expanded a bit, particularly in the springtime, because of the changes our climate is going through? Um, hard to really know the exact causes of it. Um, we have uh, historical records go back a long ways. Um, the tornadoes that we had in, in March were the earliest that we have had uh, on record, mm -hmm. um, but probably not the earliest that has ever happened in the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're a lot more... Uh, cognizant of, of tornadoes with the equipment and the people and the, the awareness 
um, than we were years ago. Um, but, uh, but as far as what is changing and what causes the changes, a lot of the changes that we experience up in here regarding drought, regarding severe, severe weather and weather and how intense they really get, uh, are more connected to the El Nino and La Nina mm -hmm. uh, that occurs out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, as being our primary contributors to the uh, the weather in our area. Mm -hmm. um, um, having said that, uh, we've seen milder winters um, over the last number of years um, than we have seen. Still gets cold, but uh, <laughs> but does. compared with some of the other years, um, less cold. Less cold. Mm -hmm. So, what do we need to concentrate on then for severe weather awareness week? Yes. What's happening? Yeah, a number of things on each of the different days. They have uh, the things to, the, to be thinking about. Um, um, earlier in the week, you know, um, we were talking about flooding and uh, the impact that can come from that and, and wind. Um, Thursday is kind of the big or the highlight day of mm -hmm. the week. Um, it's, it's, it's and the I day. should say we're filming this on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and it will air Wednesday, where you're seeing it right now. Mm -hmm. So then tomorrow, actually Thursday, Thursday <laughs> <laughs> would be uh, would be uh, the the statewide tornado drills. Mm, okay. um, there's a number of things that go on with that. Uh, they'll be putting together a test watch, um, and uh, and also a couple of those, and they'll also be doing a couple of test warnings. Um, in which they'll be sounding sirens, um, they'll be doing the um, uh, issuing out in various media um, uh, fake warnings, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, provided that the weather isn't really, really bad. They'll, they'll mm -hmm. abort that whole thing if the weather is uh, potentially bad. Um, but uh, what we're looking at with this, uh, you know, in the afternoon, typically 1.45, and I believe the other one is at 6.45, um, they're going to be sounding the, uh, the sirens here in town. And they'll also be triggering um, the uh, National Weather Service weather radios or NOAA weather radios mm. um, uh, so that you have a chance to verify that you could receive those signals properly, mm -hmm. um, that everything's configured right on your, on your weather radio. Um, the reason for having two of them is people work different shifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gives people an opportunity, regardless of which shift you're on, most of them will have a chance to do something at work and something at home. And, uh, and the biggest thing that we're after with this is to, to make sure that people um, have a plan um, on what they're going to do in the event of, uh, of severe weather. Um, know where you're going to go when you're at home, when you're at work. Um, know where you're going to go if you're staying in any location and people go to school know where the, the, the tornado shelters are located within the schools, know where they are within your church if you're going to be there for several hours. It's important. Um, or if you're out shopping and you're at mm -hmm. one of the large big box stores, where is their emergency shelter? Mm -hmm. Most of those are located within the, uh, the restroom facilities mm -hmm. um, within those, but I wouldn't necessarily take that for, for granted. <laughs> right. Um, and, and so it does help to be aware of those kinds of things. Typically they're going to usher you in a, in a, in a Facilities such as that, they're going to work pretty hard to get people into shelters very quickly mm -hmm. um, uh, when, that's, when that's necessary. Okay. So now, we get here two different types of warnings. We get a watch mm -hmm. and we get a warning. Explain the difference between the two and why we should pay attention to both of them. Absolutely. Um, the, and actually, I'll expand it and go out a little bit further than that because it's watches and warnings, but there's also thunderstorm versus tornado. Ah, that's um, true. And so a watch um, is typically issued, they come out of the National uh, the Severe Forecast uh, Center in uh, Norman, Oklahoma, um, in consultation with National Weather Service offices around the nation. Um, but they'll be making these, basically saying that the conditions are ripe for the development of either severe thunderstorms or tornadoes, depending mm -hmm. on which weather kind of watch it is. Um, the watches typically are very large. They cover parts of multiple states. And they're basically just saying, isn't necessarily anything, anything happening right now, but conditions are favorable for the development of those of, uh, situations. Um, um, a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning basically is an indication they come out of the, the um, uh, forecast office, in our case Chanhassen, um, and th they're saying that either radar indicated or spotter uh, confirmed um, there is a severe thunderstorm or a tornado uh, in effect at that time. Um, and so a warning basically means take shelter now. Mm -hmm. um, with a watch it's 
be aware of what's going on, pay attention to your local radio stations, um, whatever media you use, whether it's on your cell phone or, or otherwise, uh, pay attention to what's going on. But when you get a warning, it's time to take action and take action now. And the action does not mean walking out your front door and looking up at the sky, right? <laughs> which which seems to become so much more popular lately, and yet leave that to people that are that are actually properly trained. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and do stay in touch either with your cell phone, mm -hmm. with other media, radio, um, they come across with their alerts right away, and uh, obviously our mm -hmm. local TV stations up in the Twin Cities, and then also in Rochester and in, in, in Mankato. Yeah. Okay, so now, actually, I didn't say where we were at right now, mm -hmm. and, and where are we? Uh, we're actually located in the, uh, the EOC, or our Emergency Operations Center, mm -hmm. which is located in the basement of the fire hall. Um, we normally staff this, uh, this space um, with about four to five people during severe weather. Um, and when I say we, I mean Steel County Skywarn. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have volunteers that are down here that are manning uh, radar, um, and we'll be working the radios that we have, uh, both our amateur radio as well as 800 megahertz. Um, and uh, we'll be tracking the position of all of our spotters on the big map that's, uh, that's over there on the wall. Um, we locate. Oh, lovely. Uh, okay. We locate uh, these people. It's magnetically backed, so we put people on the on the board based on magnets. Um, but uh, what they'll do with this is we'll locate them. If I need to put a spotter out to a particular location, uh, I might say send him out to Southwest Two, and on the map we'll have a quadrant for Southwest and a location, a sweet spot called Southwest Two. Mm -hmm. And uh, that location in particular. Um, what that does is that allows us to have predetermined locations um, where we've already gone out there. We know they have good visibility, mm -hmm. they have multiple exit routes, mm. and they have nearby shelter. Okay. And so since our primary job is to keep our own spotters safe so that we can keep you safe, um, <laughs> that's important for us to have those kinds of locations out there. And it's, it's a lot easier than saying go to the corner of this and this they all know where it's at. They all know where it's at, right. And mm -hmm. right now, of course, since I said we're filming this on Tuesday, I'm mm -hmm. zooming into the radar here, and mm -hmm. this is actually the rain that came through Owatonna earlier this morning, and it's way off into Wisconsin now. Yep, you're in the middle of Wisconsin at the moment. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that system moved through pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But these are the types of screens uh, of radar that you actually monitor here when we yes. do, when the National Weather Service in, um, issues um, well, a watch? We actually typically, uh, the goal for us is to deploy before warnings are out. Um, we won't actually do uh, just on a watch unless mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing something that's actually threatening. Uh, we do work with them. They contact us on a regular basis, and uh, we're in good communication with the National Weather Service in Chanhassen. It gives us the ability between us to say, is it a real threat? Are we looking at something where mm -hmm. we need to put spotters out? In which case, we'll activate and we'll deploy our volunteers. Okay, wonderful. 30 seconds left, Dave. What other things would you like to tell our audience about um, severe weather and how they should react to well, it? Well, first of all, if you are the person who goes outside instead of inside and you're really interested in severe weather, we do have one more training going on this, this uh, year. It'll be on uh, next Monday at 7 p.m. This will be down in Blooming Prairie. Um, at the City Hall. Mm -hmm. Love to have you down there. Um, and this is whether you want to be a spotter for us or whether you're just interested in severe weather. To find out what you're looking at when you see Absolutely. different types of clouds, etc. Cetera, et cetera. We'll teach you how to identify the structures and how to be safe. Okay. Take heed of both the watches and the warnings uh, this summer. Keep, your, keep yourself and your family safe. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. We Thank appreciate you. you spending the time with us today. And audience, please stay with us. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Come join the fun at the 31st Annual Vegas Thebe Fabulous Night of Nights Auction, Saturday, April 22nd at St. Mary's School in Owatonna. Doors open at 4 o'clock p.m. Admission is $10. Exciting items to bid on at the silent and live auctions. Get your car and cash raffle tickets now for a chance to win $10,000 or a 2017 Ford Focus. Great food and cash bar available. All proceeds benefit St. Mary's School. Don't miss this great community event. And, and remember, remember, what, what happens, happens at, at the auction, auction stays, stays at the auction. Hi, Eric here from Owatonna Senior Place. Participate in one of the many active fitness classes we have, or hop on the bus for one of our great day trips. We have a variety of programs and activities happening throughout the week. 
Our goal at Senior Place is to create positive moments for you at a reasonable and affordable price. Don't forget the Senior Place Partnership Program with over 40 businesses giving discounts and incentives to you for being a Senior Place member. Contact us for more details. Live full, live well, live long. Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserves with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. Well, welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And I'm very pleased to uh, introduce to you uh, Gwen Peckery and Kate Harthan, who are board members with the Oatana Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> and when I say Oatana Symphony Orchestra, I'll bet, I'll bet there's at least two of you that don't know that we do have an Oatana Symphony Orchestra here in the city of Oatana, and we're going to find out about that. Uh, from the ladies. Gwen, uh, welcome to you, uh, both of you. Uh, Thank by you. The way, and it's nice to see your instruments, so uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to the selection that you're going to. But, you know, as board members uh, of an organization that uh, is around, but sort of under the radar, maybe. It huh? is, it okay. is, yeah. And we've Shut been here a long time. A long, what, what is a long time? <laughs> Tell us about a little bit of the history. Nearly 20 years, really? believe it or not, yes. Um, wow. We've had many different directors. Um, our current one is a professor of music education and music history at the University of St. Thomas. Wow. And he's a senior choir master at Diamond Lake Lutheran Church, Minneapolis. Yeah. And he's a new author. He just published a book called Sound the Trumpet, Beat the Drums, Horse Mounted Bands of the U.S. Army, 1820 to 1940. Well, that'd be a good read. And his yeah. name is Dr. Bruce Gleason. Dr. Bruce Gleason, right. yes. So, uh, you know, in terms of, Kate, the, 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 the frequency I mean, if, you know, I, I, I've known that we've had a symphony, but I didn't know that it was maybe as active as it perhaps is. Uh, well, how many concerts, you know, do you do? Well, at this point, we're just doing one concert a year. Okay. I know um, I've talked with some other members of the orchestra about maybe getting a small group together and doing one of the 11 at 7 concerts in the park. Oh, sure. um, that probably won't happen this year, but definitely, I, th I think for next year, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're really trying to just raise awareness about the orchestra because so many people don't know about it. You know, yeah. I, I grew up here, I went to high school here, and all that time going to high school, I didn't know there was a symphony orchestra. I, I didn't know about the concerts to try and go mm -hmm. to them, you know, just to see what a full orchestra would do. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved back to town about three years ago, I think Pat Meisel just told me last year, you should play with the group. So then I joined up for last and year. I'll bet and I bet you great. were playing that violin while you were still in high school. And you yes, still didn't know yes, all through high school and started yeah. college for it. And, yeah. right. and, and your know. directors were probably our directors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. uh, oh, that's fun. So. Gwen, I have to ask you a technical question, a symphony does it does that have a certain kind of because we have symphonies and we have chamber orchestras and right, they're it, different sizes so okay. a chamber orchestra is very small mm -hmm. and plays in a small chamber so it's it's not an overwhelming sound yeah. but a symphony has got it all you got it yes, all so you yes. have all of the, the various pieces woodwinds and 
Yes, ocean, yes. Like well, and the challenge for, for our town is, is filling those positions mm -hmm. always because when you play some orchestral pieces mm -hmm. that require a lot of instrumentation, yeah. we don't always in our town have yeah. somebody to cover a part because mm -hmm. maybe we do one year and then they go off to college mm -hmm. or, or maybe uh, they, they move just <laughs> that period. So, yeah. so we have to fill those positions and that's what a lot of our, our fundraising efforts are towards is, mm -hmm. is to get those those key positions those built, so we imports. got a full symphony. Yeah, they come from other places, yep, right? Yep, or they ringers, do. as they would say. Right, and sometimes we have people move away, and they still come back and play. Oh, so nice. that's great, or they direct, like Mark yeah. Gitch, or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you've been with the symphony for how long? Uh, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> John Anderson started sure. it way yeah. back when, and uh, I saw the ad in the paper. They wanted musicians. Yeah. And so I called him up, and he goes, oh, you were on my list oh, <laughs> to nice. call. So. Yeah. And now it's ads on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't that nice? No, and, and, of course, you're not an Watanen, so your music history goes back uh, a few years. To what place? Where did you start? I grew up in the Twin Cities. Okay. Yeah. Um, Music-wise, my family is very musical, and uh -huh. it's just ingrained. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we've got every genre, and I play many different ones, and I'm learning Kate does too. So, <laughs> so I like to play the symphony, but mm -hmm. I also play uh, in Fair Bowl in a little Irish session group, uh -huh. and I play rock and roll with some kids in the Twin Cities once yeah. in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's just whatever, and we play many instruments. I played in the pits for the plays. Okay. And my daughter's mm -hmm. coming back to play in the next one. Well, nice so yeah. Nice. So you're playing the flute. In the what orchestra I play? play flute flute and piccolo in the orchestra. And piccolo, okay. Mm -hmm. Kate, what other things besides the violin do you play? Well, group wise, pretty much violin for orchestra. I do um, I led worship at a church for a year and a half with my husband. Mm -hmm. So I learned to play bass guitar, regular mm -hmm. guitar and I do keyboards. So okay. So yeah, it's fun. And I good. play guitar and mandolin and a little keyboard oh, and sing. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. My second that's instrument at college was trumpet, so that's kind of fun. I let some of my piano students test it out last week. It was very loud. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should talk about the the the, the concert yeah. as in, yep. in the and you've got the poster, very nice poster, uh, and it's going to be on uh, the 30th of April at mm -hmm. St. John Lutheran. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, a they've been venue. super to yeah. us. They've been so nice yeah. supporting us. Our first couple were at St. Joseph, but since mm -hmm. then we've been at St. John. It's a bigger venue. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and yeah. maybe, I don't know, you know, acoustics and all that, you know, how that all plays It's really in. nice. It's a good, good place for acoustics. You know, when, yeah. when I sang with the, uh, uh, the community concert, we would, would sing there. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep, and this will be featuring uh, late 19th century, early 20th century works in kind of the romantic, neo-romantic yeah. type of music. Um, sometimes we are a little more broad in what we play, different types of things, but sure. but this will be fun. Pomp and Circumstance, but this is number two, not number one that everybody <laughs> goes, the wedding yeah, it goes down graduation, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody knows that one. But sure. this sounds, sounds similar, but it's a little different, and we have the... Uh, I won't say the French name, but it's the Funeral March of a Marionette, <laughs> which is, is, is really cool. And people will recognize it when they hear it. it it's a common piece. You might not know the name, yeah, but you yeah. will know the, you music. Know the music, yes. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Shostakovich, Waltz number two. Very um, emphasis on pathos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You just a lot of feeling and emotion mm -hmm. and very Russian. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. um, very Russian. <laughs> and The Banks of the Green Willow by George Butterworth. Mm -hmm. He's very British. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very relaxing, soothing British piece. Yeah. It's countryside, you know, reminiscent yeah. of that, meadows. Yeah. Um, Pavan by Faure. I'll be playing my flute very low. Mm -hmm. That features the flute. Oh, okay. um, very soft because it's so low. <laughs> it's as low as the flute will go, but it's, it's very pretty. Sure. And uh, the artist's life, uh, Strauss waltzes, mm. a whole bunch of them in one. Nice. Everybody knows Strauss waltzes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. likes those. Everybody you will yeah. recognize yeah. those, yes. No, this is a free concert. It is. Right? But, Kate, you're <laughs> probably saying that, you know, it'd be nice if we could have some free will offerings. Yeah. yeah, it is nice to get donations. There obviously is a cost associated mm -hmm. with having a concert like this. Like we said, the... Um, Church has been so gracious mm -hmm. to give us the, the space, mm -hmm. um, but you know we're hiring a couple musicians. Ideally, we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. There's so much musical talent in this community. Mm -hmm. I'd really love to utilize that more. Mm -hmm. um, but just to help us with some of our goals moving forward, 
We would like to buy some instruments that we've had to rent in the past um, and maybe not rely so much on the high school's equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we could have some of our own, sure. the church has offered to let us store some of it there. Cool. So we'd have easier access that would allow us to maybe have more concerts throughout mm -hmm. the year. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And if you are uh, granted, you have been given a grant by the uh, Southeast uh, Minnesota um, uh, Southeast Minnesota Arts Council mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. with differing uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. and we were very, nice. very lucky to have a, a grant writer join the board uh, this year and he applied and we got a little money from that. Cool. So, yes. cool. super. Good. Well, you know, before we let too much time go on, we only got a couple minutes left probably. Let's hear from the both of you. Uh, what are you going to play, Kate? Uh, Kate? I'll let Gwen introduce it. She brought the piece this time. <laughs> so. right. Oh, we just thought we'd go off with something a little lively. It's called Harvest Home. It's a Could horn pipe. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly, I have to show this to people. Yeah. You think about music, you know, <laughs> know, you're not going to see it. But anyway, a lot of notes on that page. There yeah. are. <laughs> see. <Yeah. laughs> Whoa. Is it all for you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what we're sharing. <laughs> One, two. This morning. This is the second <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. Who would know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and that's just just an icebreaker mm -hmm. uh, for our guests on on the other side of the camera, so that if <laughs> yeah. there's some interest that comes to uh, to them about coming to the concert, that would be a wonderful thing. Um, so we have one concert this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you have plans for one perhaps next year? Hopefully. When, when do you start getting day. ready to, to have We have concerts? six rehearsals, so we start in March. But okay. the getting ready part is yeah. all year long. That's why you have a board, yeah. and we're working all year round to make yeah. that happen. Yeah, it's a lot of sure. work. I, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. You know, I've sat on a few boards myself, and it doesn't, it's just not easy to come to a meeting. Yeah. And then, Google right, and right. And I want to let everybody know, too, we're a 501c3, okay. so if they want to make a donation, it is tax deductible. Excellent, yep. excellent. Well, best wishes. I hope that you have a whole full house and that the, uh, the music is appreciated. Uh, there's something about classical music that really... That's something to the heart, I think, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, best wishes and you were so, thanks so much for being here with us. You know, <laughs> Thank you for fun. having it's us. Fun. Yeah. It's so much fun. So, um, and what uh, we'll do is to hopefully have you back in another year, perhaps, okay. who knows, and uh, we'll talk about the 2000. Uh, 18 concert. All right. Good. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks again. And yep. thank you thank for being you. with us today. Uh, why don't you stay tuned with us because we're going to be right back. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain and I want everyone to hear better. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Well, welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. A few announcements from the community for you today. Uh, Minnesota Severe Weather Awareness Week is April 13th through 17th of this year, and the schedule from the National Weather Service for a statewide tornado drill is on Thursday, April 20th. Stay tuned for that. At 1 o'clock, there will be a test watch, the test watch county notification. Weather radios, if you have one, uh, will activate with that. At 1.45, there will be a test tornado warning issued. Weather radios will activate. And at 6.45, a test tornado warning will be issued. Weather radios will activate. It's a good time to 
take a look at your house plans as to what you would do in case of severe weather. The, National, the Owatonna Foundation is pleased to announce the next grant application is a deadline of May 1st. Otana based 501c3 nonprofit organizations that are working on capital projects in the areas of community arts, recreation, and education may apply. And that will take care of it for today. Uh, when uh, we come back on Friday, please do, uh, we will be having Dancing with the Steel County Stars. We'll have a full complement of interviews and, and maybe some uh, exposition of dancing at that time. So, at any rate, be well. And I hope you'll come back to see us on Friday.